tell Kingdom come as we fall to the ground And proclaim Heavenly Your spirit falls, cleanse and shake us now Everybody. Dalton Travis Gray here with Stones of Zion Ministries. Um, I just want to share a, a recent vision I had. Um, I've been sitting on it for a few weeks, and um, I just I just would like to share it. I've, I've been praying on it. I think it's good that the body of Christ uh, hears this, and I hope it encourages you. It's it's definitely more of an encouraging encouraging word and an encouraging vision I received from the Lord. Um, thank you for being here. So much has been going on um, concerning the effort and the ministry that not only I have been called to, but the Lord has just built such a wonderful church body around me. Um, and, and I'm just so glad to have the, the love, the accountability, the fellowship, the hard work. Um, just so glad to be joining hands with my brothers and sisters in what we're doing at Stones of Zion Ministries. Um, we're about to make the final announcement on our coming open house, which is, is for those who are interested in joining a Christian homestead effort. It's not really for the curious or, or the, the person who would just want to come to our church uh, that we're going to be opening, but, but um, just, just people who are interested in the uh, answering the end times call and being prepared and taking care of your brother and sister in Christ. Looking forward to that. Um, and, you know, I just want to say, too, this is a common theme lately. 
not just with with myself or anybody uh, that I personally know, but it's just every time you turn on YouTube, every time you go online, um, people are slandering each other in the name of Jesus, even. And uh, you know, there's a scripture that says they will they will turn you in and thinking think that they were doing a, a service to God. And, you know, that's a prophecy for the end times. And, and you know, this this spirit of gossip and slander and hatred, um, the, the love of, of the even the body of Christ or those who think they are growing cold, we're in some, some, some wild times. And I just want to say, beware of gossip and slander. Don't do it yourself. And for every bad thing you can say, uh, Think of something good to say or 10 things good to say and just watch your life change. Um, but, uh, you know, that's something Nan and Papa would say. They said, if you don't got nothing good to say, then don't say nothing at all. You know, those old cliches are, are very true. Um, but I want to share an encouraging word with everyone today. And um, this isn't your typical treasures of he treasury of heaven word. Um, there's a lot of flaky uh, there's a lot of flaky people out there that are purporting to be prophets or hear from the Lord, and they they are steeped in the prosperity gospel, and that's pretty much all they say. But biblically, prosperity is something that the Lord speaks clearly on, and he has many promises for his people, especially those who are walking with him, you know, that they will be the head and not the tail that they will be the shining city upon a hill, that they will be the lender and not the borrower. You know, there's so many wonderful promises that God gives to his true children. And that, that promise continues to us who are in Christ, grafted in through the new covenant of his precious blood. So I just want to share this with y'all. Um, as always, I'm going to open in prayer and quote, one scripture, because this definitely is, goes hand in hand with scripture. I wouldn't share any vision or dream that was not supported by uh, the principles and the forth telling in scripture. But uh, let's open in prayer. Great Jehovah Jireh, he who has provided all things, not just he who will provide. Lord, there is nothing outside of you, Holy One of Israel. All good things lie within you. And it is us who have departed from you. It is us who have been cut away from your sight. It is us who have chosen to sin. It is us who have believed the lie of the enemy in this world. that there couldn't be someone as good as you. But I just proclaim, Lord, that there is only one as good as you. In fact, that you are uh, better than all. You're greater than all. You're kinder than all. You're wiser than all. You're more ferocious and fearsome than all. You're more mighty than all. There's just no one as good as you. There is nothing as good as you. And all good things, all good gifts come from you. Lord, you've given us many gifts. And in the group of brethren that you have gathered here, Lord, convict everybody's hearts that hear this of what we can give to others so that the goodness the eternal goodness of your wonderful heart can be seen even as this age comes to a close. In Jesus' name, the living God. Amen. All right. So there's only one scripture I need to quote for this because it really defines the entire vision. Uh, Seek you first the kingdom of God in all of his righteousness, in all of these things shall be added unto you. That is the scripture that I will share before I share my vision. There is a key in that scripture, 
And it's the same key that my vision expounds upon. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it's the same key. And um, there's some more details. So I'll, I'll just get straight into it. So I was just caught up in, into that place where, where I go when I, when I see a vision. And I saw a castle, which represents the kingdom of God. I saw people within this castle. I saw them all laughing and hugging and enjoying each other's company in the courtyard of this castle. And it was a great sight. Everyone was, was happy. But then I was taken like I was lifted up. And I saw, you know, how castles have um, towers. So, you know, this castle had many towers. And I was lifted up and I saw on top of one of the towers were piles and piles of treasure. And there was even kind of clouds up there. It, it looked very heavenly. It was like a castle in the sky. But... You know, at the height of this tower, there was treasure. There was gemstones. There was gold. There was silver. There was diamonds. There was everything of value. Um, and, and I saw that this treasure was so overwhelmingly uh, large in quantity that it could the tower could barely hold it because it was just plopped on top of this tower and there was piles of it, and and gold would just kind of roll off the top of this tower, and it would fall over the edge of, of this tower towards the people in the courtyard. But it would stop. It was like an uh, invisible force field was there. It couldn't go below this tower. And so if, if some gold fell, kind of like those coin machines, where you put in a quarter and try to knock off other quarters. It was like that. It was like one piece would fall and just treasure would start to kind of avalanche down and it would fall, but it would just get caught by this invisible barrier. And it would float right back up onto this tower. And this is when the Holy Spirit comes in. And I was beholding this and I, I didn't really understand what it meant. But the Holy Spirit came to me and this was more like an instant knowing a download not not simply his voice but not simply not his voice but if i could translate what he was showing me into more conversational terms it was that the people down in the courtyard were in the kingdom of god and they were happy in the outer court so to say and there was so much more to discover within the kingdom of God, this castle. And I was shown that there was the door to this tower was even at the courtyard. It wasn't even, it wasn't an obscure door. It wasn't hidden. It wasn't locked away. The door was not locked. I knew from the Holy Spirit that anyone could go in this door. Anyone could. Um, they could, they could access this treasure if they so desired. All they needed as a prerequisite was, number one, they had, to, they had to go in the door and they had to climb up to the place where this treasure was stored at. And this treasure was accessible to everyone. I, I knew by the Holy Spirit that this was not just some secret thing, you know, some hidden mystery, nothing like that. It was just there for anyone to have access to that was in this castle, the kingdom of God. But they were so distracted and content, more so content where they were at, that they did not go up to this place where the treasure was. And so I... I asked the Lord about it. I, I said, Lord, have I, have I accessed this treasure before? And he said, indeed you have. You know, this year, for example, I, I intentionally left my job after the Lord said it was time. 
after many years of praying about it, I had a dream that it was time. And so uh, I got myself out of there um, willingly. And, and I thanked them when I left. And a week later, I got a call. And I did this for the ministry, by the way. I didn't do it, didn't do it for any sort of self-seeking. I did it because I wanted to serve God the rest of my life full time. I had no idea how it was going to happen. A week after I left my job out of obedience, I got a call and and thank God because I did not know how I was going to pay any bills. I was just blindly and recklessly abandoning and obeying. I got a call a week later and it was provided that I could do Stones of Zion full time. And I don't mean out of ministry donations. We appreciate those. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't make money off of ministry donations. Um, those are those are for those in need. We tithe to other ministries and we take care of ministry business. Um, that is that is what ministry donations go towards. We have open books, by the way, too. Um, but this was a random benefactor that called and said, "I'm called to help you to do ministry full time," and I'm going to do this, and it was amazing. It was a week after I laid down just my last hold here in Babylon, so to say, my last secular attachment, and God provided. And it was a miracle, true, truly a miracle. So I asked the Lord in this vision, I said, have I access this? And he said, yes, you have, and he brought me back to that. He said, this, is, this was an example. And when this happened, the Lord said, this is the first of many, many miracles um, that will come. And that, that happened earlier this year. Financial miracles. There's been loads of miracles in this ministry. Um, but the key that the Lord gave me was that the people had to come up to that place. And he, he showed me that the way up is, is opposite of what we're taught here in this world. The way up in the kingdom of heaven is down in the eyes of this world. For example, I was making X amount of money for the last several years in, when I was just chasing after all my own dreams and doing what I had to do in this world to pay my bills and blah, blah, blah. I was making X amount of money, and it was a pretty good amount. And I left all that behind and cut it in three or four, divide it by four. And, and, and I did not know how I was going to make it because I was obeying the Lord. And then all of a sudden he provided, that's just an example I'm making. And this is not about me. This is just me connecting it to my own life. But that was down in the eyes of the world. Everybody's like, you're crazy. You know, why would you do that? Uh, and they would even use God to justify not doing it. Oh, God gave you all this and God gave you that and you should stay stay here and keep doing what you're doing and chase your dreams and follow your heart and all these cliches that people think are God and they're not. But no, I had to let it go to obtain an entry into this treasury. And so really the Lord was telling me and showing me in this vision that that he wants all of his people to have access to this treasure. And this treasure is not for the personal enrichment. This treasure is for the mission and the purposes of God to happen in all of the earth at all times for good. So this, this, is, this is the Lord blessing his people so that they can continue to spread his great name and his great work in all of the earth. And this, this treasure is, is not locked away. But the only way to get it is to come up to that place. And the way to come up to that place is down in this world. It's by laying down your own personal ambitions and your own job and your own this or that that the Lord is calling you to lay down. It's laying down your dreams and your desires and accepting his desire. And in doing that, that treasure is sitting there more than enough to do what he asks us to do. And we have to remain in that place at all times where we can, we can listen to his voice 
and we can do the little things and the big things he's asking us to do and be a good steward. That's that's a discipline of a walk in itself. But I just want to encourage you that he told me in this vision, he wanted me to tell all those people in the courtyard to come up there. And that if, if we were to come up there together as a corporate body of Christ in our church, specifically in Stones of Zion. So this is for Stones of Zion people, but it's also for all in the body of Christ. The Lord told me in this vision that he wanted me to go rally them in the courtyard that were content and bring them up to this place where we were recklessly abandoned for the gospel. We were recklessly abandoned for spreading the power of God in his mighty works in baptizing and casting out demons and doing healing the sick and raising the dead and doing all the things, making that our mission, seeking first the kingdom of God. But he said, if we did that as a corporate body, it would unlock all of that treasure and that we would not be without anything to do all the things that he calls us to do. And I want to encourage you that the way up is down and no one will understand you at first and no one will understand the conviction you have and you won't understand it. It might be a sorrowful journey at first. It was for me. But if you follow the Lord with a pure heart, I'm telling you, that treasure is there to not only take care of you, but to overflow and to do something great in this world. And it will come through means that you do not do not foresee. And I was told these things as a young man when I was pursuing ministry. And I forsook. I thought these words were foolishness. I was. It was prophesied over me that this would be my entire career in my life when I was younger. And I forsook these words. I was like, that doesn't make sense. I have to go get my own thing and chase my own thing and do what the world tells me to do to have what I want and what I need. And I wish I would have listened to that humble pastor that told me this and prophesied this over me because now it's coming true. But it, the Lord required sacrifice first. So I want to encourage you that this, this treasure in heaven, please come up to this place where, where you recklessly abandon all of your own will. And, and Paul calls it seizing from your own works and entering into eternal rest. Seize from your own works so that you can do the works of God. And I'm telling you that that treasure, not only financial, but the power of God, the peace of God, all the things of value are in that high place. The, whole, the only catch is the door is not locked. You, you got to do some climbing, so that might take a little out of you. But that treasure only remains in that place. And it's in its spiritual dimension, so to say. It's a dimension that you can walk in. It's a dimension that, that we can wake up and, and lay ourselves down and be in where the Lord provides all of our needs at all times. And he provides the needs to accomplish all the things that he wills. Uh, our elder in our church at Stones of Zion says, the Lord doesn't order anything that he doesn't pay for. He doesn't order anything that he doesn't pay for. So I just want to encourage you all that the treasury of heaven is open to you. And it's not some secret thing. I'm not telling you, you got to give to me to access it. Giving does unlock it because that's a promise in scripture. Give to someone, give to someone in need directly in front of you and see what starts happening. Lay down your own ambitions. Answer the call of God. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. And, and we are at the time of the final harvest. So, so I just want to encourage everyone. The Lord is going to provide all we need to accomplish the mission of the gospel in these in these last days, in this final hour. And the only way to access it is to go up to the place where this treasure is. And that is a place of full surrender and chasing the Great Commission and helping others and laying down our own lives. So I hope this was encouraging to you. 
And just know that most of us are those people in the courtyard. We're content just being in the door. We're content in the courtyard, hanging out, drinking coffee in our mega church with our, our buddies. But if you, if you go deeper and you go higher with the Lord, miracles begin to happen. And I can tell you at Stones of Zion, less than a year ago, I was on my brother's trampoline, renewing my covenant with the Lord to follow him and do what he originally called me to do. And now we're in the middle of closing on around 700 acres for Christian homesteading purposes and preservation of the saints in the last days. We're going to be opening a church. We have amazing people, skilled people, anointed people, all within less than a year. That tells you how fast the Lord is moving. But the, and, and, and there was a lot of treasures of heaven opened in this process, but it came through us sacrificing our time, sacrificing our own desires for the benefit of others. And that's literally how we led this charge. And we'll keep leading it that way. Um, Lord, help me to lead it that way. Help me to stay in that place. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name, help all of us to do that. So we, we love you at Stones of Zion. We love you. Um, if you need help, let us know. I have been a little behind on deliverance calls, and I, I'm so sorry uh, for that. I've just, I'm newly wed. I've been getting all of my, my house in order for sale. Luckily, uh, or fortunately, um, I don't like the word lucky. Fortunately, um, things are moving rapidly um, in all of those those realms. And uh, we're looking forward to being on the property and doing this Christian homestead life and um, continuing to share the journey. So, guys, go proudly and gratefully access the treasury of heaven and do it by laying down your life. So the Lord is the one who owns all the gold and all the silver and the cattle on a thousand hills and every tree and animal in the forest. He owns everything. And he does not order anything he doesn't pay for. And the Lord has a lot of orders in these last days, and he's going to make it happen. Whatever part of that purpose you are, the Lord will bring it to pass. Just come up to that place and see what happens next. Love y'all. Thank you for hearing this vision, and I hope it's an encouragement to you. Have a good evening, and uh, just have a good September and October. The Feast of Trumpets is here. The UN Assembly is happening right now. They're going to try to walk out with the World Covenant Peace Pact. This could be the start of the 70th week. And we're, we're going into some trying times. But I'm telling you, the Lord has better plans than the devil. And it's through sacrifice that we get there. Much love. Mentioning of the